Okay, I don't know what happened there. I think something was supposed to happen. Hello, welcome to the No Holds Barred Witchcraft Podcast. Um, this is going to be a, a slightly weird kind of podcast because there is a podcast title, but I don't really actually remember what it was. I just remember, Chris, you and I was having a little conversation earlier about triangles again because it's your favourite shape on that so can you um remind me what we were well you go off on one about triangles i mean it would be in a bag of your favorite things wouldn't it there'd be some charm bags in there some triangles in there a bit of war yarns that sort of shit you know you're such a prick mary poppins carpet bag would be full of that sort of thing if it was your carpet bag no i don't think that's true no, but, so you wouldn't have, if you have Mary Poppins carpet bag, you wouldn't have a sewing machine in there or an overlocker or any war needles or triangles or anything now. All of those things, apart from triangles, you're making, trying to use that as an argument to make triangles my thing. Triangles aren't my thing. Okay. Just, it's one of those universal connection points, isn't it? The triangle where three things come together. It is a universal shape, along with the circle and the square, that they teach yeah. you in nursery school. You know when you've got to squeeze all those little shapes in the right shape, but actually they all go through the square hole, and it really annoys the teacher when you put all of them through the square hole. You know that? Yeah. I was one of those people that put it all through the square hole, and I'd look at her straight in the eye, whilst i was doing it <laughs> and <laughs> smile because that's the kind of child i still am <laughs> i was gonna say it's definitely the kind of adult you still are right okay so uh not having the intro music has all kind of kerfuffled my brain up so let's just continue where we left off with what we were talking about earlier so you've got a spell crafting class that you're teaching and you're combining the triangle of manifestation with the planetary magic occult kind of ceremonial magic -y kind of cabalistic kind of thing with our little spell triangle that we normally use to teach for a spell craft and you said about obviously three points three concepts three parts components of a spell trying to uh, you know assign a planetary correspondence to each one so what have we arrived at transmuting our spell casting triangle into a planetary spell casting triangle the slow kids won't follow along with this but oh well it's no old spot <laughs> so yeah so i was trying to, i was trying to see if there was a way to naturally line up the kind of carbalistic planetary triangle of manifestation with our kind of you know fire triangle of spell casting that we used to explain to the be absolute beginners because they're used to it which is again is why i like the triangle um is because that kind of fire triangle when you're told how you know how fires happen that kind of very kind of um simplistic but has depth and has a possibility for depth um that is there with that kind of triangle shape so i was trying to see if there was a way because this isn't like a normal workshop where they're just coming to see me it's it's in a moot arrangement right so obviously you've got people of different ability levels um they're not coming to necessarily learn that so i kind of want to use it as a start for bigger discussion i suppose and actually wanting it um the interesting thing is in terms of time will be this will come out the day after i've done the session so no one can cheat oh. and listen to what i've said uh, okay. ahead of time um but anybody that was there can kind of fact check against what i was originally thinking so i, I imagine this screws me anyway but the um so yeah so kind of going with that triangle that we talk about so the kind of spell triangle of kind of like power on one side um 
intentional focus on the what then another side and then the journey of how it gets through the two things bringing them all together i was trying to see whether or not i could apply the um the three planets of the kind of kabbalistic planetary ma um, triangle of manifestation and see if they overlap comfortably mm -hmm. um because obviously they are like you were saying earlier that they're, they're like they're very different concepts really because with the planetary part you're talking about three concepts coming together rather than methodologies so you're kind of talking about three um the amalgamation of three core concepts bringing together and manifesting something um whereas obviously i'm i guess i'm talking more about with the spell triangle you're talking about manifestation of a a goal or a not necessarily the entire working if that makes sense yeah so the three planets or planetary spheres or spheres of influence or sphera whatever you want to call it that we'd be talking about would be mercury luna which would be the moon and venus and all of those things, each of those, are like Mary Poppins carpet bags. And they're all full of huge depth and all sorts of crazy ass stuff and concepts and things. The basic spellcraft in Triangle we use to explain, like how in primary school they used to teach you how spot fire starts and the things that need to be in existence or the things that need to be there, the conditions and such for a fire to start. We try to teach that and break that down for magical spellcasting, the basics of magical spellcasting, which I think we both use slightly different words, and we both tend to change those words to keep and make sure people are paying attention. So the one I tend to go for is the three points that you need for a spell to work would be intention, so an understanding of what it is you want to happen, you know, I want more money is an intention. I want money, 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 money. I want to get rid of this disease or symptom is a, I want that, the I want, okay? That's what you want, the outcome that you want. The reason for doing the spell is the intention. That's your intention for doing the thing. The next we have is the journey, Okay, which also includes time, remember? So how do I want it to happen? How do I want to get this money? Do I want to win the lottery? Is it a lottery spell? Do I want to inherit something? Do I just want to pull opportunity to make money? Foundation of how the spell works. And now going into, I know what I want, but how do I want it to manifest? the route to manifestation and of course time factors in which is very important because i want to make sure that this is happening within a certain amount of time i don't want to do a money spell and in another 50 years it manifests i might need it by the end of this week so i can pay the bills or something you know and then the last one would be the energy because at the end of the day like we've said before if your intention is to get to the end of the road and the way you want to get to the end of the road is via driving in your car. Your car needs fuel. You know, you sat in that car, jigging the spear steering wheel, trying to get to the other road, end of the road, is literally that intention and that journey part where you're steering and that. But there is no fuel. There is no power source. Nothing's actually giving it the oomph to make the spell happen. And that is the energetic component so we're trying to marry those three up journey intention and energy with the corresponding lower planets lower things and we've agreed that they do fit into each one of those and i know you obviously do the triangle so do you want to confuse them a little bit and, and change any of the words <laughs> Because I just gave my one that I normally explain. Yeah. No, I, I, I we struggle with the word intention because of what that that tends to get conflated nowadays. So I kind of swap the word intention often for focus. Um, magical and, plebs and it, have ruined it. Just say it how it is. The magical plebs have ruined 
word intention because they believe magic is all about the intention when we know it is not. And then energy, obviously, is interchangeable with the word power, which is what I yeah. tend to use. Power source, mm. fuel, uh, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, so I kind of started to think and I struggled. And the reason I brought it up with you this morning, Liam, was more a case of is is my <laughs> is my bias showing? So because I wanted to put power or that kind of energy field where that is coming from, the kind of creative spark I put in Venus. So I was kind of like, if that was the case, I didn't want that to be a, a bias from my point of view because I tend to be more Venusian. Um, and I was half expecting you to argue with me and say, no, no, it needed to be in Mercury um, just to show your bias. But actually, it sounded like you were kind of agreeing with me. No, I agree with you, I think, entirely. So, um, and then, yeah, so for me, it would be kind of the marrying up of the kind of power centre, the creative force behind the spell, whether or not that be pulling from sp uh, plant allies or, you know, or using um, ingredients as a raw power source, if that might be your creative mind part of that connection between your conscious and subconscious kind of point. Um, whatever those things that you use it to power, I'm kind of seating that with Venus. Um, and then the opposite end, um, for the Mercury part, I've kind of gone for that kind of focus, that intention, that the mechanics of it, that kind of how, uh, what, what your kind of current goal, your direction, the controlled aspect is kind of what, um, I kind of feel is the kind of mercurial part and then obviously both of those energy within powers would have to go through Luna in order to get to the planet you know get to Terra to get to the physical realm so therefore kind of pulling those two through that would be the journey aspect so the you know the how it's going to play out what order it's going to go in um, because obviously, particularly when people first start doing spells, they don't, they, that's the one they tend to control the least because they don't seem to know how things will naturally play out. You know, how we constantly talk about, you know, um, magic will use the most energy efficient and most direct route of making, uh, joining up kind of Mercury and Venus. So, and that kind of play out, that kind of mythos or um, storytelling happens through the kind of lunar realm, through the kind of astral, in pulling it through the astral into the physical. So, yeah, so I kind of feel like I married them up nicely. Obviously, like you say, these are oversimplifications for what those three, um, you know, bags of tricks, the three planets are. But I think they kind of pull that kind of downward triangle, pulling through that energy into manifestation, which is, I think, the part that I don't hear very many people talk about, is that kind of pulling of those slightly higher energies through the, the other. Um, there is a kind of another way I want to talk about them, and whether how you feel about this, Liam because I might be oversharing um, and we're obviously not in the paid the paid for section yet, but I might hint at it and then you can kind of see um, what, um, whether or not we go through my thought process or if we hide it and change the subject. So when I start to think about, because obviously you we've talked about it before, planetary is not my natural way to think of how um, magical constituents come together mm. it's been a new foyer for me over the last couple of years since we've been teaching uh, together that yeah. I've started to see the kind of merit there is for the kind of neutrality shall I say of the Kabbalistic planetary system that allows you to kind of map anything on them because they're not they're not dictated to by any kind of um, 
specific pantheon etc so i quite like their kind of neutrality um so i kind of i've i've learned to, lo to love it slowly um because obviously i would go through the more convoluted more venusian way uh, of looking at it through the zodiac because that makes more sense to me um from my lofty position um up in neptune but that's that's just how my brain operates um so so yeah so i've i've kind of had to get down and dirty and find a clean method of doing so um and you presented this this carbolistic method which has slowly absorbed and i've you know made it just as convoluted as my zodiac system and probably looks nothing like what you introduced me to liam but you know at the end of the day i think it's been quite good but in our um mentoring sessions a lot of the things we'll do we talk about scratch scratch testing a lot and i quite i've got quite used to using the kind of planet trees as a good place and we'll often ask students to or mentees rather to um map the soul and they all have very different ideas about it but one struck me recently which is not what what the actual mentee said but i did think about it in this way um which completely again convolutes the system because they liked to think of things orderly don't they of going up or down yeah. said carbolistic system yeah. and this kind of complicates matters but actually goes a lot closer to hashtag um vagina soul um <laughs> of actually explaining what I'm, I just think what triggered what I'm about to say, which is, I quite like looking at Mercury and Venus. So above the astral, obviously, which is where most people will put in Luna. Um, but above those, technically, because you look at it as going up, you see kind of Mercury and Venus above it. And to me, those kind of split naturally into the kind of left, right, left brain and kind of going with that kind of logic and um, creativity, that aspect. So to me, I kind of, I put the kind of conscious and the unconscious mind up there above the astral which would confuse the shit I imagine out of most people. But I'm going to, as it's no holds barred, I'm thinking I'll throw it out at you and you can decide whether or not we actually carry on having this conversation or if we change the subject altogether. So we did a very simple podcast on this. And by very simple, people are still asking questions and scratching their heads over it. It was called The Weaving Planets podcast where uh, Kabbalistic planetary magic meets textiles magic and it went down as quite a popular one um this to a certain extent could be seen as an extension of that and it's going to be very difficult because now we rel we go into the realms of having to have specific conversations about specific areas of magic for a very specific lens and that isn't very you know conducive to everyone being able to follow Following. along but it is no holds barred and that is the nature of this show for most people i mean there are still people that ask whether they need a black cat candle in order to do a lucky hex on someone a lucky hex what's a lucky hex well a luck spell combined with a hex take your unlucky nature and give it to someone else because there's a hex and yeah see multiple levels blah 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 anyway we're now going into something specific so specifics now the whole idea of the cabalistic tree is the balancing system that you fill in the blank that you understand it is a symbol and like all symbols it's very very layered and very deep now chris and what he's explained talking about the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain anyone that understands basic psychology and neuroscience would probably understand that left hemisphere right hemisphere it's displayed on the tree so on the tree of life you have terra the physical body 
in the physical body, of course, we have left hemisphere, right hemisphere, because it's our physical brain. But then we have the next layer, which is obviously the astral body, the astral body. And we're now dealing with, when we're talking astral body and above, we're talking with the greater aspects of people. And although these are still low aspects, they're greater as in they exist outside of the physical plane. So we consider them to be greater. Now you can see on the tree of life that there is a line that links the physical world with Venus and the physical world with Mercury as a kind of nod to what Chris has just said. It is a line, a pathway towards understanding and that is a path that a magician, magical practitioner, witch, whatever can use. Now when we talk about magic and accessing magic and make magic, making the magic happen, there are many routes to that. There are many paths to that and many magical systems, the most common of which is to use the psychic pathways, the house of the psychic arts, which would be the lunar house, and that pathway between the physical body, the mind and the unconscious, the dream state, all of that to get to the astral body. However, when we look at other magical practitioners, they don't use that necessarily. Artists that lose themselves in their art and channel art, they aren't necessarily going through the psychic doorway. They're going through a more of a Venusian current, the artist, the Venusian current. The person that understands the deep depths of the mysteries from a scientific mathematical perspective, they're going purely for a mercurial lens, for a left hemisphere of the brain. And you can see that in the tree. Now, what we're talking about with the triangle of manifestation from a planetary perspective is how cool and brilliant and amazing a magical practitioner could be if they got that left hemisphere pathway, mercurial pathway, they got that Venusian um, beautiful in-depth flow, creativity, current that you lose yourself in, Venusian pathway, and they got the, the psychic pathway, you know, all together equally on the same phone, you know, linked them all together and were balanced. That is a amazingly powerful magical practitioner with a many a tools in their arsenal. We don't see many practitioners like that, I don't think, Chris, people, because people have a natural bias. And it's about improving that natural bias. Now, because we are the type of people we are, and we like to delve ever deeper down rabbit holes, we start off explaining spellcasting and basic spellcasting through the macrocosm, microcosm, kind of jig it in the astral world, it will manifest in the physical world. But actually, there are multiple layers to that. We normally teach the basic spellcasting triangle from spellcasting manifestations that kind of intention, journey, energy, slash power thing. But we want to go deeper today. And this is a little bit more deeper. There's a little bit more depth to this. So I'm not entirely sure where you wanted to go, but so far I think we're all on the same page. I think when it comes to the Calabalistic planetary perspective, when it comes to teaching, is having a system that's simple enough, but also adaptable enough for multiple people to have a conversation at a higher level, which I believe that's one of the best things within the Western magical tradition that we've kind of adopted and we use. From a cheating perspective, from a magical practitioner's perspective, you've obviously done a lot of work for yourself and a lot of work for other people. And unfortunately, that's like the magical practitioners, which is in that of the past, because you do the work and the mundane just sees what the mundane wants to see. You know, they just see mad Chris, he made some magic happen. You know, they see you operating on a very high level. Well, that's the problem. They don't see you operating on a very high level. They just see any slight, small things that you do in the physical and learning magic you can't jump them straight to the high level. <laughs> They've got to already be operating there. And is that rickety, scary looking bridge or ladder or whatever you want to call it that is building a way of navigating to get to really higher levels of magic, that advanced forms of magic. We have to go through the foundational levels and then through the intermediate levels. And it's not, unless we decide to do that for shits and giggles, 
generally you operate on the level that is the most economical or the one that you want to operate on and the higher the level that you have access to you know not everyone can follow that and not everyone can understand it so i don't know where you want to go with this i knew we were kind of sticking to the low triangle so the mercury lunar venusian current but we can go yeah. beyond that if you'd like but i think I'd be fascinated to do a little bit of a chat about how you, in your mind, feel, you know, the, basically the, how you're going to teach something like this to a room full of people in what's essentially probably a pub. Um, but we'll do that on the Patreon, because just in case, you know, we want to go into any personal kind of things. But. The, so the, where my brain is at the moment, because there is no way, I think when you describe this as a kind of sequel to planetary mm. uh weaving planets i imagine most people thought oh that means they'll focus on those upper triangles they hinted at whereas actually i think actually <laughs> weaving planets has proven one thing above everything else which is they aren't ready for those upper upper triangles quite yet um based on the fact that how popular that one has become and how many times people have had to re-listen to that one in order to kind of get somewhere with it. Um, so I kind of really want to solidify that kind of lower triangle that, you know, if you're attempting to ever even consider being an intermediate practitioner and kind of graduating from beginner, mm. um, you really need to have bloody mastered um, that uh, manifestation triangle at the bottom. Um, obviously to kind of blow people's minds a little bit more but I give no further explanation is really we forget when we look at the tree of life a lot of the time or at least people do um, that we are <laughs> we are describing something multi-dimensional yeah. in a two-dimensional way um, which makes people kind of go oh well you know I can see the up down aspect of it but are they actually seeing that you know, from a manifestation point of view, that triangle becomes a prism. As yeah. That kind of triangle, rather than you looking at it kind of front on, then kind of flips upwards. And the, the downward, um, the downward part comes into where terror meets all of those three points. Um, even though we talk about it kind of going through Luna, we don't actually mean it in a direct kind of two-dimensional way mm. of watching it filter down through it's just the way in which these multiple triangles all come together in order to manifest at the base um and people often see you know that little um little multicolored square that reminds me of ludo that's okay. normally positioned at the bottom um, in in the kind of terror module. And actually they kind of look at it and they go, oh, it's a square of four triangles. And you kind of like, well, no, it's a multidimensional prism that you're looking down at um, where all these these triangles are kind of meeting together of those, those four um, basic ass elementary representations of terror um are all being viewed from a different viewpoint which is you as creator as manifester looking downward upon um and the energetic part that's going from the astral down into the kind of terror aspect that kind of transmutation part where thought energy etc is all colliding to bring manifestation forth and then i think that kind of point you won't i won't be able to push until we cross the the rubicon abyss. as it was <laughs> well some people would say we're about to cross over the abyss but they'll know actually if they're on the other side that it was merely just a veil and the abyss is much higher <laughs> so that's it for the regular edition of the no holds bar witchcraft podcast if you want to listen to us talk more go on the thought of witchcraft patreon